This is the K-pop cast, and in this episode, we discuss part two of the civil war between Hybe and Minhee Jin of Adore. EXO World Tour news, BTS RM's second album, and Road to Kingdom Season 2. We also share comebacks from New Jeans, Zico and Jenny, Kim Woo Jin, and Astros Jin Jin and Moonbae. Ugh. Oh, so yeah, rest in tears, peace. Tears were shed during that cover, part of the conversation, I'll be Indeed. honest. <laughs> Beautiful. But before we get into all those topics, guys, don't forget to join the K-pop cast listener fam on Slack. And help chip in for our editing costs. Links to all those in the episode description. And now for hit replays. Woo! Ow! I'm Michaela. I'm Stephanie. I'm DJ Peter Lowe, and hit replays are K pop song recommendations that we recommend that you check out. So, kick us off. Michaela, Peter, what's your hit replay? Yes, I'm kicking it off with Kim Woo Jin's I Like the Way. Yeah, so Kim Woo Jin, uh, we've mentioned him in passing on this channel before, especially uh, around the time of his debut, because it was a big, a big uh, moment for K-pop of like you know people leaving groups and coming back. So to, to give a bit of a background behind like who Kim Woo Jin is and like where he where he came from. So he was an SM trainee turned JYP trainee turned Stray Kid. So he originally debuted with Stray Kids back in 2017, 2019, uh, 2018. And then in 2019, barely like a year and a few months after their debut, it was announced uh, by JYP that he would be leaving Stray Kids and JYP and citing personal reasons. There wasn't really much else given as to why he left the company. Um, and it was a very turbulent time for Stray Kids. It was very rough because this was literally in the middle of album promotions. It was during their fifth mini album, Cle Leventar. I, I think I'm pronouncing that one right. <laughs> uh, they had just released the, the MV for the song Double Knot that he was in. And so they had to, you know, reshoot, re-release, reissue albums. This really came weeks before their first solo concert in November, because th- it was announced that he would be leaving in October. So it was, it was kind of the, the considered the roughest time in Stray Kids history, and it seemed, or at least how Stray Kids members kind of referred to that time, it wasn't a very amicable departure like Bang Chan really uh, in his live streams refers to him indirectly as someone who he felt betrayed by and really caused a lot of pain with the mistakes and was very irresponsible so when it comes to how a significant portion of the Stray Kids fandom sees Wu Jin it's very negative just because of all of the issues that came around him leaving the group so this might be another one of those uh, episodes where we get canceled by all the OT9 or OTH strays or stays. <laughs> strays. <laughs> we canceled catching, just for catching that. strays from the stays with this one. Mm, that's a good one. Yeah. So moving into 2020, 2021, a uh, bit of a trigger warning before because these, these topics are a bit... Uh, sensitive for some people. Uh, it, there was a Twitter user that claimed that they had been sexually assaulted by Wu Jin, and then uh, though his company at the time refuted all the claims, there was still a very major wave of like anti Wu Jin, like hashtag like Wu Jin is over party was one of those things that was trending. So he has mentioned that you know he didn't really want to address it because he didn't feel like he had to apologize for something that he didn't do. And also the company made this whole quote documentary about refuting all the evidence against him, which we had talked about at the time seemed fairly in, like unprofessional or at least un- insensitive to the the concept around sexual assault. Um, but it, it there hasn't been anything proven against him. So None of the the claims that came out around this time were actually true, but basically up to the point that he left Stray Kids to now, he's kind of been fighting these 
lingering rumors against his career. So now we we go to this this release in 2024 where he has this pre video talking about now he really feels comfortable to, like actually sharing his story and like addressing things more correct uh, directly about how he was feeling at the time because okay. he so so why why do you recommend people check out this song yeah so first of all just like to get into why this song is my hit replay like it's it's a funky bass line. Like that just hits every time for me. Like it worked when when One Us did it. It worked when Infinite did it. Like it's just one of those those sounds in K-pop that I really love, and especially with Wu Jin's vocal style on this track. I just I just fell in love with it. It was immediate hit replay when I listened to it. And also watching the music video, it was really cool to see that he actually got a bit of a budget now that he's under a, a label that's been acquired by SM. There's like, it's very theatrical. There's very clear references to old boy in it, which people consider a, a movie about the the pain that rumors can cause people, which is like very true to, to what Wooja's experience is. And revenge. And, and revenge. Carefully calculated revenge over years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he, in the end of the music video, the revenge is actually against himself. And he mentioned in the commentary that like this whole release and like this music video specifically is like him killing off the old version of himself and starting a new mm. in his career, which I'm so excited for because this whole album is a hit replay, to be honest. Yo, I was actually considering choosing B-sides from right? this album for the hit replay, but <laughs> I was like, to, all right, that, that'll be... You're about to fight for this one. Yeah, Definitely. yeah. I, I, You know, Michaela got to it first. Michaela. <laughs> um, but I really enjoyed this album, mini album. I suppose there's some great tracks on there that I think should have been title tracks with the whole dance practice, performance, all of that. Mm -hmm. um, what You Say is like an Afrobeat song that's it's not quite like the other ones that are coming out in K-pop these days. And Pretty Mess is just like a fun, oh, addictive yes. pop song. So I, I was impressed by his vocals first. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, the, pro the production on the whole album is top tier. And that's why Woojin works so well as like he would he debuted as Stray Kid's main vocal. Like he he has mm. always had the talent to back up his solo career. Yeah, well deserved. Worth mm. the wait. Uh but Stephanie, what is your hit replay for this week? So um taking it in a, another direction, maybe less hype direction, um, my hit replay is Fly by Astro's Jin Jin featuring the voice of Moonbin. Rest in peace. <laughs> So Jin Jin and Moonbin, members of K-pop group Astro that debuted in 2016 and they really took off in 2019 after a hiatus. But at that point, certain members started to have you know, health issues, Moonbin included, may he rest in peace. And uh, Rocky left the group in 2023. So Astro has had some struggles. They've been a really like an underdog group. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think the most famous member is Chao Nu, who is known for his visuals and his acting. But yeah, Astro holds a special place in many K-pop fans' hearts, you know, because of the soul they bring to their performance, the talent, but like the soul, the personality that everybody brings. And so I, I, I mentioned that one member did, Moonbin did pass away in April, 2023. And so this song featuring his vocals being released now a year after his passing, I think exactly a year after mm -hmm. his passing, April 19th, um, is just a special commemoration of you know the light that he brought to the group and to all of us fans so i i knew i was going to hear his voice when i clicked on the song and i wasn't sure what i was going to feel but i i immediately felt like a a relief you know that he's he's supporting us from the other side 
And so I just thought it was a, a beautiful tribute, not only with how they treated his, his vocals, which they were, I think they were recorded back in 2018 for the song. They didn't edit his vocals at all. They just let them speak for themselves. They just edited the lyrics that Jinjin, Jin, the rapper of the group, sang along with him uh, to be more of a, a goodbye and we'll always love you and be inspired by you kind of message. And I appreciated the simple video as well. You see Jinjin Jin walking alone on a beach, maybe holding flowers and just remembering his dear friend. And so I just... Uh, it brought up a lot of feels for me and I imagine a lot of fans as well. Um, but I, I appreciated this this simple commemorative tribute to Moonbin. Yeah, I think re relief is the right word for it. Like that, that's the vibe and sentiment I was feeling as well listening to this. Yeah. So, Peter, why don't you bring us home with your hit replay? Okay, yeah, taking things in a different direction. Hold on, um, hold on. I want to make sure, Michaela, if you wanted to say anything here. Sorry, I did. <laughs> kind of like blew past. Oh but oh. just to rewind, it just in case you want to share. Yeah, other other than all the tears that I shed while listening yeah. to this song, it's just, I think you said it's a beautiful, beautiful gift to us, Aroha, that Miss Moonbeam. And, you know, it's 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 great to to have these projects after you know, the passing of an artist and you, you, you think like how many other possible songs might be out there with his voice on it. But I'm so glad that we, we got this. And if we don't get anything else, I'd, I'd be happy. Mm. Well said. Thank you. All right. Passing it along to Peter to take us home. What's your hit replay? Yeah, I'll add on the movement that there was also a lot of ways they could have done it wrong. Right. Yeah. It's really yeah. easy to screw Indeed. that up. Yeah, mm -hmm. they, they did. So. That's right. Okay, so yeah, taking things in a different direction, um, my hit replay is a delightful surprise collab between Zico and Jenny. A black pig. Silly now we yell it now one more. Sing sing vow we got it. I got to put good on I pitch it to the man. Pull we dress on up my hey Cindy. Hey. When I'm going home tonight. All right. So if you didn't already know, woo. <laughs> oh boy. G, G Ho. Yeah. You got okay. it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, formally, or excuse me, professionally known as Zico. <laughs> um, he is kind of an OG. He debuted in the, he debuted as the leader of mm -hmm. the boy group Block B. In 2011, I love Black Beat. They had so many good songs. Do you wanna be? And uh, he's been something of a notable like K-pop music producer. And uh, what he went on to uh, form what, what what do you call it? Uh, Koz. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. King it's, of the Zungle. <laughs> yeah. So it's a South Korean record label that specializes in hip hop and R and B, which uh, is owned by Hype. Yeah. Yes, it is a Hype subsidiary. There you go. Because Hype is K-pop now. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, he Zico, he also produced the he kicked off like the TikTok trend. Or at least that's, that's what he's claiming. Mm. Because I wouldn't run with it. Like even if he wasn't the first, he he definitely, you know, for K-pop, for K-pop, yeah. But he he made a strong impression with the song, any song, and uh -huh. just making everyone do TikTok dance covers with him. Uh, and we say that as TikTok may be banned here <laughs> right. <laughs> right. in a couple of days in the U.S. But anyway, <laughs> um, and then uh, Jenny from Blackpink. Um, she is a South Korean singer, rapper, and actress. Uh, yeah, she was in The <laughs> Idol. I, I forgot about that. And that was mm. moving on. So that, that yeah, we all know her from, from being a, a, one of the members of, of Blackpink. And she's been with Blackpink for a number of years. So 
Um, it's a hit replay for me because I love the low piano bass line synth sound. I, I don't know. What would you call that, mm. Stephanie and Michaela? What do you, how would you describe that bass line? Your guess is as good as mine. Okay. But yeah, I like I, it too. I know what you're talking about. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. There's a lot of funk in that. Yeah. There's also funky. a little funky in the back. Yeah. So it's got that the low end frequency sound. That kind of envelops you. Like if you listen to it, like in a stereo setting where we've got like speakers set up surrounding mm-hmm. you, it kind of like fills the room. So you got that low end. And then on the high end, you've got Jenny's vocals coming in on top. And just like, you know, those things together combined with like the funky, groovy party jam beat. And then like, you know, Zico's uh, vocals kind of in the middle. It's just a really good, you know. Party jam bop. I, I just love it. And the music video itself has a lot of character. Um, you know, I, I think maybe a concept that's not foreign, but just not conventional to, to K-pop either. And uh, yeah, I I mean, it, it's just a fun song. I like, it, you know, it's a good warm-up song to play at, at K-pop DJ gigs for sure. So that's nice. my hit replay. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was Is a it- fun surprise. Isn't it isn't it lovely when Jenny gets to work with other producers that aren't Teddy? Am oh, I, yeah, am I right? indeed. No, <laughs> I, I just feel like her voice to me when I heard it, it was like it was a bit of a shock because it like one, it felt like I hadn't really listened to her, her in a minute because I didn't really love her her solo release that she yeah, came out with last year, and it, I don't know, it just feels like she's got like a different timber to her voice, mm-hmm. a different like color, and I, I I credit Zico for that because oh yeah, we, we've never really heard her with other producers. True. Yeah, it, it's a completely different side of her, even if it's like the same yeah. range of, 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 in delivery, so to speak. It's just like he knew how to frame the voice well. Yeah. Um, and we, yeah, I, I was going to say that, like it, it's almost like we're seeing a completely new side of, of Jenny, um, even though there's not any real surprises here. It's just like, you know, it's just, just a better contrast for her, her character, her voice. She's also having fun in the music video. Yeah, they look. It yeah, looks like the fun. best. They're having fun together. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Also, I, I, I gotta give a shout out to all the dancers in it as well. There's a lot of them. Okay, moving on. So we've got uh, KpopDances.com every week. They they post the most covered K-pop songs. So coming in at number ten this week, we've got uh, number ten the week of April twenty ninth, twenty twenty four. Coming in at number 10 most covered K-pop song is Itzy's Born to Be. Number nine at Itzy's Untouchable. So Itzy still mm. on there. Uh, number eight, NCT Smoothie, your favorite song, oh. Stephanie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see, what number is this? Uh, number, wait, 10, 9, 8, 7, 7. We've got Espa Drama. Uh, number six, we've got TXT Deja Vu. Yes. That, that's up there. Uh, number five, we've got La Seraphim Easy. Number four, La Seraphim Smart. Mm. Uh, number three, Baby Monster Sheesh. <laughs> nice, Peter. Thanks. And then number two, you want to guess what's number two? Mm. I just okay, know I'll what give you both a hint. Okay, okay. Number one and number two are both like eight go girl groups. So. Well, Eyelid must yeah. be one. Yeah. Yeah. And then what's what's number what's the other one? You already did La Serra. Would it be is it New Jeans already? It just came no. out. No, it's is not New Jeans. No, no, they're not they're not, not enough. It's another girl group. Have, yeah, it's another girl group. Come Give on, guys, you got this. What? It, it's a girl group that's really popular that I've been playing at all my gigs the last I had what? like four gigs in the last seven days, by what the way. I played miss? it at every one of them. But that's a lot. Yeah. They're really okay, popular. It's a, oh, Kiss it's of a, Life? Yes. Oh, wow. Okay, so which was higher? Eyelet? Or I, is that how you say it? Eyelet? Yeah. Or, yeah. or Kiss of Life? I'm who's number one? Who's number two? I think Eyelet. Yeah, Eyelet number one, Kiss of Life number two. Yep, you guys got it. So number Ooh. two, Kiss of Life's uh, Midas Touch. Okay. Oh, so I've been doing the dance. I've oh, yeah? The dance choreography to the, the hook of that song. Ooh. I need to practice it more Gotta because my timing is, isn't quite there yet, but like... It's a very sexy, girly song. Mm. And then, um, yeah, imagine a fat dad bod being no, dancing to it. No, stop saying but, that. Peter. And number one, we've got <laughs> Islet Magnetic. And, and that's another really fun song. Okay. Uh, 
hot issue. How you think Woo. the thing we're all here to discuss, like what you've all been waiting for, chapter two in the Hybe Civil War. Dun dun dun. PDM, take us away. <laughs> What's the latest? <laughs> Back to you. Oh my gosh, guys! As as the developing story is, as we record it today. Uh, th- this day, April 29th, of, April 29th, around 5.30 p.m. Pacific time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Updates are coming out every minute. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you know, not to get into so much of we already talked about before in our last episode, um, Hybe claimed uh, that Minhee Jin attempted to separate from Hybe and take a door and new jeans with her. Uh, Minhee Jin, after we, we literally after we we stopped recording the next day, uh, held a press conference, basically denying all the allegations against her that I presented, um, citing that, you know, the high corporate structure, like, is one of the reasons why she herself is actually a whistleblower against the company and stating that she's been held captive in a slave contract and she she couldn't leave Hive even if she wanted to and she was only doing all of this for the sake of new jeans and it was I, I don't know if you got a chance to watch it, Stephanie, but the the press conference that she gave was very it like she was cursing, it felt mm-hmm. very stream of consciousness, like she had two lawyers to like either side of her who were trying to like help guide her conversation and she would just like ra- like steamroll over all of their mm-hmm. suggestions with her own accusations there were there were screenshots of conversations between her yeah. and CEOs of Hive like she was name dropping she was talking about how when she joined Source Music she wasn't the reason why G Friend disbanded that you know it was other people who were involved in that because she, you know, joined Hybe to to be part of Source Music in order to use, she claims, um, Source Music's trainees to make the first Hybe girl group, which originally was supposed to be New Jeans, but yeah. a second contingent in the Source Music camp ends up debuting Ive before New Jeans, uh. which is kind of the beginning of their contentious relationship because she claims that she was you know they, she was supposed to be the one to have the first hive girl group and like it was it was going to be Minhee mm-hmm. Jin's girl group yeah yeah so she's she's coming out swinging basically in the PR war you know she, it's obvious that Bang PD and Hybe PR are trying to smear her character and you know air out her dirty laundry and she said okay bet <laughs> right, <laughs> and it was it was a little awkward to watch. I'll be honest, because like she's very mm. emotional throughout the whole thing, but there was there was cases where it, it's like clear that she's genuinely crying, but there's also cases where it feels like she's, <laughs> um, you know, acting out certain emotions, or maybe are, are, are pre- I don't know that don't necessarily feel genuine. So, uh, I I don't. It, it was hard to to to, to truly like accept everything that she was saying be- of course and because you know because it feels like if you just look at it from the face value you want you have sympathy sympathy for her like she looks she looks disheveled, disheveled. she's like not <laughs> like she's just wearing it. like a bald cap and like an oversized t-shirt all of which have now all been sold out in south korea mm-hmm. by the way everything she was wearing at that yep. press conference what are you gonna wear to halloween this year <laughs> oh yes oh of course. yes great idea so it was just emma it was just very it was very I don't I don't necessarily know if it had the effect that she wanted it to have or at least you know uh turning the Korean public's favor towards her or getting sympathy from from them. I don't know. I guess it seems to give more time for the story to hang in the air and mm-hmm. whatever to go on in the background. So his Hybe, Hybe has been responding to the press yeah, conference. They, right. they respond to like 12 points and very lengthy uh, 
<laughs> very uh, in detail responses uh, after the the press conference. Um, just to, to, to name a few things, there was claims, you know, her her claim of a of a slave contract. They mentioned that this was all part of the the non compete clause that are in every shareholder agreement, um, and the fact that it was actually more of a comp- it was supposed to be confidential, and the fact that she re- talked about it during a press conference might actually give them legal grounds against her. <laughs> uh, oh. There was claims that she had been consulting a shaman um, about business decisions. And Doesn't everybody? She claimed that this person was just a friend, but they claimed that they she had disclosed very specific um, executive stock option amounts to this person, mm-hmm. okay. which is not something you would be doing to somebody who is just a friend. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. Also, one of the big things that she talked about was because, you know, we just... Uh, New Jeans just had a comeback like a few days after this press conference happened. Uh, and she was like, you know, Hybe doesn't cherish New Jeans. Hybe doesn't as much as I do. Like, they're, see, look at them bringing up all this stuff right before a comeback. And in their eyes, Minhee Jin is actually the one threatening the company most because she's basically using the artist as a hostage in for her negotiations mm-hmm. against the company. So... There's a lot more other points that came up. It was a very long conference, but those are kind of like, that's the gist of kind of like what has happened so far. Mm. No, thanks. Thanks for the rundown and the update. Oh uh, my gosh, it yeah. was a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, I, I'm just looking at the notes here and you sifted through a lot of material to give us the latest. So yeah, I really appreciate that. Mm-hmm. I'm sure the, the listeners do too. I'm I'm interested in kind of the bird's eye view here of... Mm how this situation, this fallout, can actually be tied back to Hybe's decision to structure their company in this way. Right. Mm -hmm. For Hybe to decide years ago, okay, we're actually, you know, instead of having, you know, like the old SM model or whatever, we're, we're going to uh, which which is all like centralized, everything in house. You know, we are one. <laughs> um, <laughs> they said, okay, we're we're gonna decide to have to to just like hungry hippos style acquire a lot of small labels and have a kind of loose connection between them. They're they're, they're not really talking to each other. In fact, they're competing with the, with one another. These sub labels, and that works out well in some ways for the big dog up top, you know, Mm -hmm. they can benefit from the competition. But however, in a situation like this, um, like we can see the, the, the fallout of not having a tight, uh, you know, owned and operated relationship with your, with your IP, with your intellectual property, this independent aspect Actually, you know, Minhee Jin is running with that. No, see, I'm I'm independent and I own this artist and you can't tell me nothing. So I yeah, in, in a way we're kind of seeing what would be the the conclusion of structuring your company in this way, like not having everything under one house and trying to uh I guess shield yourself from uh you know one group or one sub label doing poorly, I guess that, that, that could be a motivation for structuring your company like that. Diversifying across many labels means that you're not dependent on just one group or one team, but, um, yeah, that means you're, you're not in control of them anymore. So here we are. Yeah. It does feel a bit, uh, like lack of strategy or direction, Yeah, you know, uh, top down, but at the same time, Commercially, it seems to be working. Totally, that's why they did it. Yeah, but you you would think that lack of strategy and direction would make it harder to be commercially successful, and and yet they've done it here, at, at least from what I what what appears to be a commercial success mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. for all parties involved. Yeah. No, it, it's interesting. Um, I mean, clearly, uh, Min Hei Jin like has felt like, uh, you know, she's been handed a great deal of injustice here. This has been like her only outlet to say her piece and put it on the record. Um, 
I don't know. I, I think it's just weird that it had to come out in this particular format. Mm. What what has been PDNM like as, as you've been looking at this? Like, what has mm-hmm. been like the reception been to the the parties on this? Like, I could be mistaken, but I feel like I've seen people say on social media that the Korean public is, is siding more with um, Min Hae Jin and what she's saying. Yes. Um... Though that I, when it comes to like general like polls that have been out there, there's not necessarily anything that's super credible about like who, whose side people are are on right at this point. Mm-hmm. Um, like like I said, because because of basically her, she she looked like she was fighting for her life during yeah. that that press conference, and uh, a singular woman, especially a woman in the music industry, you know, trying to to fight for her position. Is is somebody who is going to gain some sympathy from the, the Korean public, especially from from Korean women? Because hmm. I'm just thinking back to the Lee Suman SM uh, mm. dispute and like how the reception was very different for like Westerners versus mainlander uh, Koreans. Like Koreans were like Lee Suman's camp, and then like over here in the West, we were like Lee Suman is such a joke. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so. Yeah, I'm just curious, you know, how is this translating across cultures right now? Hmm. Well, at, at least with, from the general consensus among international fans, that at least the ones that have been the most vocal online, uh, Min Hee Jin has always been a contentious person in the mm-hmm. first place. Polarizing, and, yeah. And especially with how, again, like how she's been very vocal and not holding back and calling other bringing other groups and other uh, artists into to the mix. She's she's being a little bit too crazy for people, and th- they'd rather her just be taken out of the picture so that they know that the their artists are going to be in a more stable place. Because right right now it's very. I think us yeah, international fans are distrustful of yeah. the labels and the label executives across the board. Mm-hmm. And, you know, in her case, the history of alleged or, you know, proof, uh, minor sexualization, her weird, you know, proclivities around that, had, mm-hmm. yeah, taken hold in the U.S. audience. Yeah, those, those specifically Top of being for, for people that don't know when she was at SM Entertainment and the, the things that she did for, uh, like, you know, sh- groups like Shiny um, and EXO and Red Velvet, things like that. Yeah, I mean, carrying over to New Jeans. Still, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, with Cookie, mm-hmm. who can forget? It's it's still hard hard to tell. I think we need a little bit more more time out and a few more more evidence Driven. to be presented. Yeah. Because yeah. right now, at, at least from from what has been reported from like uh, news outlets like uh, Yonhap, like they don't. As far as the evidence that Hype has presented against Min Hee Jin, it's kind of looking like they don't necessarily have a a case against her, but that's again mm. the evidence that has been presented to the public as of right now. Yeah. Well, tune in next time. Right next week, <laughs> as we get the latest next update on. Uh, are, are are we doing a hit replay next week, or are we doing K Drama Cast next week? Oh, K Drama Cast. Subscribe to find out. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Okay, there, we'll 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 touch back on this. I'm sure later. Because it's it's the the story is developing. Yeah, this is this is the big the big story of the year, probably. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I see we have a shill here for uh, a PR plug. So, uh, <laughs> Michaela, go ahead, do your thing. Well, I, you know, KCON is just around the corner, guys. So, KCON oh, wanted you to, to know that uh, considered a lucky number in Korean culture, KCON will hold. Three monthly giveaways with three lucky fans to win tickets to KCON with one grand prize winner to to win a hotel accommodations for their stay in downtown Los Angeles. So for people who want to get all the information on this giveaway, be sure to follow uh, KCON USA on all socials for more information on how to enter. Yes, mm-hmm. giveaway hopefuls have three ways to enter uh. via Twitter, <laughs> email, or SMS subscription. Okay. How, how do we, how do we say this like you know in a K drama and then suddenly you're talking about like skincare or like subway or, or something <laughs> like 
<laughs> right. Yeah. Okay, quick, quick TPL for cake on here on the K-pop podcast. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, Stephanie. Okay. Well, some exciting news that I saw on the interwebs this week is that the survival show Road to Kingdom is confirmed to return with season two after four years off the air. Now, Road to Kingdom, for those of you who are not familiar, go look it up, go watch it. Some of the most talented boy groups in K-pop compete on, you know, all of the different areas of, of talent, but mainly can they entertain with like an unlimited budget, like on the stage, can they perform live, like, and well, hold that, our attention? And that unlimited budget coming from the labels, not the uh, show <laughs> producers. Uh, yes, right. <laughs> <laughs> That's something exactly. Good, yeah, yeah. Editing could use work. Um, but yeah, it's always like really entertaining for me to see those performances because it's not, it's so different from just the, the regular run of the mill, you know, Inky Gayo, whatever. <laughs> oh yeah. It's something unique every time. And so the, the groups that are, I don't know if they're confirmed or, or speculated, but most, most likely confirmed the groups that we're going to see on road to kingdom are fairly young, newer groups, including, Psychers from KQ Entertainment, The New Six, Eight Turn, uh, and then some groups that we saw and loved on peak time, Ghost Nine, BAE 173. Am I missing somebody? ATBO. ATBO. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So wow, those, those are all like banger, right? banger groups. Like the, the groups with like the very loud... Mm-hmm. I, I was going to say, you kids keep using that word. And I don't think <laughs> that word means what you think it means, but noise music, uh-huh. like these these are all the noise music yeah. boy groups. I think Zykers is going to kill it, following in the predecessors of their uh, sun base. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I ATs mean, did super well. Yeah, on, on Kingdom, because they, oh, they right. didn't have to go to Road to Kingdom. They were already they were already <laughs> in the nomination. Kingdom. Yeah, uh, past winners and like group, groups that did really well include The Boys, Stray mm-hmm. Kids, ATs. Who else was up there? Like top two. Yeah, I yeah. really, I really hope that these these eight groups that are suspected are actually on there because that means it'll be an even number and we mm. won't see an elimination like we did in during first season where <sighs> Golden Child was unfairly oh. eliminated from the show. Injustice. Oh my God! Yes, they were really good. Wait, I remember. How were they? Uh, mm-hmm. What? How were they eliminated? They were well. The like one of the like pre, like one one of the it was like a, a team pair up event, and so they because they were the bottom group, they got eliminated because there was only seven groups. Mm. I, I'm not following. So the, there were, there was a matchup. Yeah, there was a there was a team they, there was a team challenge where two two groups would team up with each other but there were seven groups so by the time they got to that challenge one a uh, golden child was the seventh group in the voting and so they were eliminated oh, by default they couldn't even compete in that one no that's messed up because because someone else in the uh, group project didn't do their homework well no they, or, or they, could, they didn't have a partner I, I guess going into the pair challenge the the show just decided well we need even number of teams so we just shave one off there was no, there was no reason why they had to eliminate them, though. It was why, why even have them on the show? Right, mm. Ex- exactly, mm. Peter. My point exactly. I was just still feeling it, still fresh. Oh. Anyways, tune in okay. to <laughs> Mnet for Road Kingdom. to Kingdom season two. Mm-hmm. Although it's it's gonna be hard to top that pentagon performance that made me cry <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> literally no well, no the the performance the top ATs. is the 80s dvorak yeah. uh pirate shanty oh, see, that's still, that's still kingdom Lair. peter i'm talking yeah, about road, road to, to kingdom. kingdom is different but yeah these 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 rookie oh, okay boys. excuse me yeah, yeah yeah sorry all good and that's it. You say kingdom and all I think of is I know. And, and that. <laughs> it's so it. funny because you say kingdom and all I think of is icon, to be honest. Like those are oh, the only performances icon. I remember from kingdom. Really? Mm-hmm. Mm. All right. Well, shall we move on to debak or not? 
Oh, or did you have yeah. something? So what, I, I don't know. I, I guess maybe two things. Like one thing, like I just want to put it out there. Like I, I just appreciate ATs for being the only uh, K-pop group really nailing the <laughs> uh, time traveling swashbuckler. <laughs> yes cyberpunk concept. Mm-hmm. Like I, I don't think any other K-pop group is doing that concept really well right now, but they've got it down. Yeah. Yeah. They're really good. And I, and I guess maybe if I, you let me squeeze in another thing, um, Liz posted in our Slack and I, I just love it. Um, it's my bias group. Um, a young posse. Oh yeah. Um, they put out a video like filmed in the early nineties like a 1994 music show where uh, they had a panel of judges reviewing uh, their performance and giving like really messed up reviews, just like how um, the OGs, the song that they sampled in their song, Extra Extra Large or XXL, um, So Tragedy and the Boys is Come Back Home, just how that song, when it came out in the early 90s, like people were like, what is this? And all the music critics at the time were like, I, I can't listen to this. This is not music. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, very humorous take. Go check out the video. It is very well done. And it, it is just like content like that is an example of why Young Posse is just breaking all the rules. Yeah, it, I want to come uh, back like, to them being your bias group, Peter. So they're officially, they're officially like stuck in your heart forever or? Uh, for now, yeah. I mean, I play them... Uh, at my gigs, and I think no one dances to them, but I play them. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, yeah, I'm right up there with BB, Jen Soyeon, uh, Chung Ha, yeah, Boa, mm. Sunmi, yeah, you know the female divas, the gay icons, <laughs> the Gaysian icons. Anyway, <laughs> uh, okay. Daybok or not. So, are you guys daybok or not on each of these things? You can say if your glass half full, half not, empty, and however you choose to interpret that thing, and then uh, wait for fans to come at you in the comments. Ah. So, um, are you daybok or not on BB and Jackson's feeling lucky music video? Ooh, d- daybok. Daybok. Of the, of the of the two uh, co-ed collabs that we got, you know, Jenny and Zico and Jackson and BB, this one was mm. definitely the hottest. <laughs> mm. You're just so close to kissing every second. <laughs> yeah, but I, you know, with all that, I, I actually don't feel the chemistry yeah. with them, you know, honestly. Yeah. It, it, it doesn't feel... Yeah. I, I don't know what it, what it is about it that I can't feel the chemistry. They're not each other's type. Yeah, that's what it feels like. <laughs> yeah, and looks they're trying like, to sell honestly. it. Honestly, they're trying. Yeah, I know, I know they're trying. But so, are you or not? Yeah, I guess I'm not for that reason. Okay, fair. Even though I love both BB and, and Jackson, two biases for sure. Yeah. Yep, can't win them all. All right, are you Dave or not? Uh, New Jeans is bubblegum, which just came out. This is like my first knot for new Ooh. jeans. I don't know if it's like all the all the, the controversy that's going around right now, but for some reason, this is like the first new jeans comeback that is like a meh for me. Yeah, it's definitely not as strong of a debak as I've had for their previous releases. I, I think I was saying in the Slack that I'm getting a little tired of the vocal cadence inspired by like Lizzo, Doja Cat. But there's some fun, like, flute accents in the instrumental that save it for me. So barely day by. Mm, okay. I'm going to appreciate the Y2K aesthetic. Like, this is, what, middle school <laughs> yeah. uh, technology that we're seeing in the music video. And uh, I, I, I think I get the appeal of it now. Mm. So I, I, for that, it, it's, it's day by. Uh, no that no was comment school? yet. Uh, for some of us. What, was that, so that was when you were born, PDM? Ouch. Were you even born yet? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, they've got Hello. the, uh, I like how they have the OG, uh, what, which, which generation of iMac is this? But you know, the one where it had the, the movable yeah. um, monitor display. Mm-hmm. That was a really fun one. I think it was the last 
iMac they had on the Motorola PowerPC. Oh, what? CPU. Yeah. Okay. Are you guys Daybuck or not? And Yuki's Freak. Daybuck. Yeah, Daybuck. Oh, yeah, me too. I love yeah. it. I, it's a good song. And I, I really love the music video. Just how yes. it kind of laughs at all these horror movies mm-hmm. and like gives like a very honest, like, you know how we often talk about appropriation in K-pop? Yeah. Like, oh, let me just lift the aesthetic of this culture. Like, I feel like with this one, they actually understood yeah, the zeitgeist so of all the different uh, horror films that they're recontextualizing into this more comedy uh, setting. So I, I, I really liked it. I, I thought they did a great job with it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I'm here for a weird, quirky, Sephic love song. Yes. Wait, what? Wait, wait, what? I, she's, I missed that yeah, part. Yeah, referring to her and she. And yeah, her. she's not talking about herself. She's talking about a, a woman that she wants to get on her knees for. That's, <laughs> oh. I, know. I know. I thought you would jump on that, Peter. Oh, sorry. See, I yeah didn't pay enough attention. Wow. Mm-hmm. Double Daybok. Okay. Uh, for me. Um, so we're all Daybok. Maximum Daybok. Um, <laughs> okay, zero base one. Sweat, the summer uh, special summer video. I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I, I. I. <laughs> <laughs> like how many times can I? Well, just like okay, I am Daybok on on the song. I love the concept of them like on a having like a performance on the beach. I feel like it's it's what I would love to have like a K-pop concert at like a beach mm. party thing. Like that would be amazing. It's like I think it's what I want Water Bomb to be. Mm. But <laughs> I don't know. It was just the 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 correlation between sweat and then like the first few scenes is them just like dripping and like water droplets coming at your face. What's wrong just, with that? I don't know. It just it looked. It was like, ugh. <laughs> oh, you're actually thinking of sweat. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Kind of on sweat, the nose. Sweating is sweating is gross, mm. but they make it look good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I thought Koreans just don't sweat. Mm. Like it. Like isn't that a thing? Like like they don't need deodorant. <laughs> I've heard that. Let us know in the Slack. Is this true? <laughs> I know my wife doesn't need deodorant, but I do. But. <laughs> Those jeans. <laughs> uh, okay. Anyways, yeah, uh, yeah I, I guess I'm yeah, Daybok. Mild, mildly Daybok. Are you guys Daybok or not on Ives? Hey, yeah. Not really. It just came out. I feel like I will be in a few weeks, but right now it's just, it's <laughs> not in the weeks. It's, it's not in the rotation. <laughs> to work my way up to Daybot. Yeah. Yeah. No, that, that's the accurate answer. What, what, uh, Petey Neb just said. Um, <laughs> their, their song Kitsch, for example, yeah. like I wasn't really feeling for the breakdowns because it kind of killed the momentum of the song. It's the drop, but that drop is just so powerful in that song that it, it's making a comeback right now mm. in the clubs. So like, I'm I'm Daybok on the fans telling me if the song is Daybok or not. Okay, <laughs> all right. That. So I'll I'll just wait and see what the reaction is. Yeah. Okay, uh, are you Daybok or not on Seventeen's Maestro? Mild Daybok. Yeah, it's it's Daybok only in the sense that like. I can't wait to hear somebody cover it at KCON this year. <laughs> Ooh. All right. Uh, by the way, sorry, we forgot to do this. Um, go get the facts. Go check that. Get the facts. Go check that. <laughs> um, so in the last episode, we, I <laughs> incorrectly said, hey, fact check. Like, <laughs> the visa fees aren't going up that much. Actually, they are. Um, I was looking at an article from the State Department from 2023 and not 2024. So that that was my bad. They're uh, they're actually going up a lot. <laughs> yeah. So he Peter's referring to the visa the visa fees for international artists to enter the U.S. and go on tour. Those fees are in ha, have increased as of April first, two hundred and fifty percent. Yeah. So before the cost per application was four hundred and sixty dollars, um, and now it'll be uh, one thousand six hundred fifteen or one thousand six hundred fifty-five. Um, but per human. Yeah, per human. <laughs> yeah. Ouch. I wonder what it is per Espa I or a virtual I. Uh-huh, see? 
This is why we're moving to virtual idols. Because not only can they be around the world digitally, they can also do that all over the world at all the places at, at the, the same, same time. time. And you don't have to worry about losing out on their peak moment um, because they're with you forever. Weird. Okay, thanks for that correction, Peter. All good. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, th thanks, Liz and Dina, for that call out in the Slack. All right. So thank you, Peter, for that fact check. We're going to move on to our first Debug or Not headline. RM says it's going to be May. <laughs> <Get you. laughs> because he is coming back in May with a his second solo album, Right Place, Wrong Person. Um, it looks like it's probably going to be about the same vibe as his last one. So we're not we're, okay. we're not getting any bangers on this one. It's no more bangers. moody, gentle, uh, you know, sad okay. boy songs. <laughs> <laughs> sad boy RM. Mm -hmm. Enough. You need bangers. Yeah. Go but talk it is, to your boy, Sugar. Yeah, it is interesting, though, that this is coming out while he's currently serving military service. So he's not mm. really going to be able to promote this at all. But we are we are going to get... A new music from him so that's that's why so cool. are you day back or not uh, I'm, ah. I'm not because mm. you know i want i want my rm beggars like i I'm, I'm here for him you know expressing his rap his monster sad boy emotions but yeah that's that's who i knew him by that is the government name yep <laughs> so rap mon jones yeah I'll, I, mm -hmm. I'll i'll be i'll be seated for the next one seated I love it. Yeah. Same for me. It'll probably be chill, whatever, but it's a not. Mm -hmm. All right. So our next Day Walk or Not headline, we've got the continued slow death of AOMG with producer Code Kunst parting way with the agency. Uh, I mean, it's I'm, I'm Day Walk for him, you know, being able to, to, to move on and like start his own thing. But it's just it's hard. To, to see the slow death of AOMG. Yeah. Why don't they just throw in the towel already? Mm -hmm. Just let everybody go. Right. What's the goal here of dragging it out? It's probably like just contract stuff. Like, yeah, that's true. Everybody's letting the time run out. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. So his, his exit follows news of, of Gray and Simon J and Lehigh and it just, yeah, one one after another <laughs> everybody mm -hmm. and this is this is after 10 years at the company wow that long huh oh sorry uh, and then simon dominic departed after 10 years with AMG. Yeah. i think i think he's Kunz has been there a, a few few probably like maybe four four or five years mm -hmm. yeah but again so so i love how go. jb was like oh and in hire was like the first in and first to leave <laughs> He was like, all right, I'm good. I'm going to hit out. <laughs> right. <laughs> Anyways. Mm -hmm. All right. So we, uh, we're, I, I was, I think I was Daybok on this. You were. Yeah. Yeah. Daybok. Daybok. Okay. All right. Be free. Yeah. In our next headline, we've got a new K-pop girl group debuting under hit maker Paul Thompson's new K-pop label, uh, Paul Thompson. Clearly is an Italian American. <laughs> yeah, who, some who moved, white dude. This is not a pen to, name of a Korean artist. <laughs> yeah, he moved to South Korea originally uh, to teach English, um, and has now formed his own K-pop label that will debut girl group VVS in October. And he cites uh, wanting to try his at at getting K-pop to evolve. So mm. we'll be checking Fighting back in words. with him in October. I, I guess I'm day block on this, but I, I, I just because I don't know what it to expect really. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I have mixed feelings on this. I don't really like his attitude from what I'm seeing him saying. Yeah, yeah, and I kind of hope he gets put in his place in a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, but he does have some hits under his belt. I must say he knows what he's doing, producing a, a good K-pop song. So we'll see. I'll yeah. Judgment. Like he's, he's looks like he's also working with some, some good producers True. like Ryan Leslie. Yeah. Uh, I, I, so I, I have a feeling it's going to be a good sound, but 
we'll we'll see. It's a it's a <laughs> the we'll first, see. first round. Yeah, league, I if guess. he plays well in in the game in the industry, which requires a lot of deference and kissing ass and stuff, mm. we'll see how he does with all that. Yeah, and so r- wrapping it up with our last headline of the week, Stephanie. Woo. So we've got EXO World Tour in 2025. Hey, Question hey, mark. Hey, hey. <laughs> Woo. Uh, I'm just I waiting on my boys, Kai yeah. and Sehun, to return. We are both obviously Daybok on this. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Have you, you know. have you seen them in concert before? Oh gosh, have I? Um, I don't think so. I don't think I've seen EXO live at all. Yeah, that was that was my my it's messed up my one thing. I chose to see BTS during their Wings tour instead of EXO that year that they toured the U.S. And that's like one of my... And that was like the only time. Uh, and I remember I was like, I was I was still an undergrad in college and like these Dang. girls that were next to me were using like the computer lab to get EXO tickets. And I was the like... computer huh. lab. And I was like, I was already, oh, I already got my BTS tickets. So good luck, you guys. Mm. <laughs> Not knowing I should have been in the trenches with them. Yep. <laughs> you never know. What a time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that would right. be dope. I, yeah. I would love to see. I mean, just just EXO as a group, so much talent, so much live performance talent. But special shout out to yeah. Baekhyun and Kai. Like, and we, I'm going to be all up on that. Three albums, right? Above mm-hmm. of music we, that they have never performed stateside. Yep. So, I oof, that'd be amazing. Ready. Mm-hmm. Okay, so wrapping up this episode this week, let our listeners know where they can find you on socials. Uh, yeah, you can find Peter at DJ Peter Low. You can find me, Stephanie, at Catchlight27 on Instagram or on the Slack. And I am PD Nim in the K pop cast Slack. And of course, you can find all of us in the K pop cast Slack. Um, and last thing, guys, if you want to support the show, please consider donating to our Ko fi link in the description. All right, bye, everybody. Bye. Yeah.